We are well and truly almost there. Yeah, no, that's right, Sniper Echo. You couldn't export an OBJ from Max 2017 when it was first released. You couldn't import an OBJ properly. If you imported an OBJ, came in all funky and messed up. You couldn't export an OBJ because it used to go out all funky and messed up. It was unbelievable. I mean, that's something that is a requirement. You have to be able to import models into your 3D program. And for them to get it, I'm pretty sure it took till Service Pack 2 for them to fix it. So, you know, months and months and months go by of people using Max 2017 and not being able to import uh, an OBJ. Now, I, I know Autodesk have a lot of software they've got to take care of, but it's not just Max, but really, come on. Well, that's right. They say, I don't know if they say Blender's buggy, but um, Max is certainly buggy. And Autodesk. I don't know. I don't know whether Autodesk just try and take on too much with all the different uh, types of software that, they, that they're that selling now. You know, Maya and, and CAD and all the rest of it. Whether their teams of people that work on it are just not big enough. I would hope not because Autodesk are quite a large company but it certainly takes them a long time to fix the problem and they shouldn't it shouldn't get to the stage where they can release a piece of software where you can't do an import like that a major 3d piece of software like mac uh, you just get the impression there's no quality assurance or testing going on anymore with these companies and that includes microsoft as well with their cumulative updates that break things you know we the end user now are being used as guinea pigs for all these companies to do the testing for them. They sack all their testers and uh, push out the updates and push out the software without really doing any sort of um, quality assurance on it. And then when people start complaining and saying, look, this is broken, then they fix it. What a world. And of course they charge you a fortune for the privilege of buying their software to begin with, so. Stinks. I don't like it and I'm not happy about it. And of course that's the other reason that studios um, crack the shits with companies like Autodesk and switch out their workflow there to something else. Because th these are businesses, they need to be able to rely on their software. They need it to work. Again, no, that's generally why a lot of businesses won't upgrade to the very latest version for that very reason. But they know there are going to be problems and uh, they rely on it to generate an income for the business, so they're very wary. Um, and that's also why with Autodesk here, I always keep the previous version of the software installed. I go to a poly, not a mesh. I've learned from, from the past to, to do that. So. That and the fact too that um, uh, different, I do work for a few different studios and they don't all have the very latest version of Max, they all have different versions. So that's the other reason I keep a couple going at the same time, a couple of versions of uh, software. I noticed uh, getting back to this uh, updating the software straight away just before I went live yesterday to stream I noticed OBS pushed out a new update 1701 I think it was uh, I downloaded it and I thought to myself now will I install this update because I was due to start streaming like half an hour after that so I thought to myself will I install this now or should I wait and I waited and then I went onto OBS's website uh, Twitter page before I decided that I was going to install the update and uh, apparently the update broke browser sources in OBS so I'm lucky I didn't uh, update it. They've since released 1702 which I haven't uh, installed yet either I thought I'd wait until after my stream here to test that out because I'm not streaming again now after today until uh, Monday next week so 
if it caused a problem, I'd have time to fix it. But that's just another perfect example. OBS is free, so I'm not going to knock them. It's great software. <laughs> but yeah, like I said, though, OBS is a free piece of software, and it's a good piece of software, so I don't have a problem with that. Um, but it just always pays to wait. Autodesk, on the other hand, you are charging a fortune for your software, so fix it. Fix it, fix it, fix it. All right. Um, we've made sure everything here is collapsed down. I may do a quick save here, guys. Just be, I know that um, it may take Max a little while, but I <laughs> I don't want to have to do all that again. So I'm just going to save out my file here again. Yeah. It may just take Max a few minutes here to save the file out. It just saves me having to um, go through all of that again tonight to collapse all those uh, modifier stacks. So yeah, like I said, getting back to OBS, I don't have a problem with that because it's free. But uh, if you're paying for software, they have a responsibility to make sure it works. And there's already people talking about class action lawsuits on Autodesk's forum because of uh, the condition Max 2017 is in. Uh, people that are subscribing and don't have the uh, option to go back to a, uh, an earlier version. Well, that's, that's exactly right tonight, Greco. The price of Autodesk software should mean they fix stuff up as soon as possible. But they did, oh, actually it saved out quite quickly that time. And I wonder if that's because of the changes I made. Because that's the fastest this program has ever saved in. Oh, has it? Yeah, as fast as it's saved out in a long time. What I'll, I'm going to go through and show you guys, just for anyone that does use Macs and might be watching me on stream, what settings I changed here. So if you go into Preferences, if you're a Windows 10 user and you're a Mac user, whether that's 2016 like I'm using here or 2017, and you're finding that saving your files is taking forever, or loading up a file is taking forever, or your machine is using twice the amount of memory that it should be using, go into your Preferences in your files here, and turn off the option for Save Viewport Thumbnail Image, Save Schematic View, and uh, Display obsolete file message. Turn those three off because by default they're, they're turned on. Because I've noticed since I turned those off, those three just here, it's made saving and loading much quicker than it was. You see I have auto backup turned off as well. Auto save is always turned off for me. Just for the benefit of all any Mac user that's on Windows 10 with the anniversary update, make sure you turn those three settings off. Save viewport, save schematic and display obsolete file message because it seems to have helped quite a bit here. I did that yesterday, and this is the first chance I've had to see whether uh, it would affect it at all. But I have noticed the memory usage has cut down to half, so... It will probably pay to turn those things off. I don't know how that's affecting the file loading and saving times, or why it's affecting it, but it seems to. Uh, but that doesn't get doesn't resolve Autodesk from, you know, releasing 2017 in a broken form. And like I said, they've got to have it now because 2018 is due in a couple, about two months' time, they're not going to fix 2017. They won't. That's the way they work. They released 2018 with a fix that they should have put in 2017. And their excuse is going to be now, well, it's a subscription model, so, you know, you're always going to be have access to the latest version, which is true. Uh, but you've got to be on subscription to do it. Uh, Snowbreaker says the only problem that he had in Blender was... Uh, fixed in three days and that was free well that's that's great and OBS have already fixed the problem up with the 1702 update that they re uh, that they caused with the 1701 that they released yesterday so what's the story here when these companies that are releasing free software can get on the ball and fix the problem immediately yet these companies that charge a fortune for their software take uh, months if ever to fix it it just doesn't seem right to me and until people start taking them to court over it, then they're just going to keep doing it. You know, I guarantee as soon as the class action lawsuits start popping up and they start having to front up in court, um, they'll change their, their tune pretty quickly then. I'll make sure they get their stuff updated and fixed. You know, I love Autodesk's software because like I said, Mac, I'm a Mac user from, for the last decade. Uh, I do like their software, but I really wish they'd fix it and not release it broken. Anyway, 
I'm sure you guys are sick of hearing me whinging about Autodesk, so let's start attaching our model. Let's start at the top and work our way down. So I've saved out a, fin a final version here. Everything's unattached, everything's collapsed, uh, everything's named. We're good to go. But because we're going to take, bring this into Eon view, I want uh, this model to be one piece of geometry. So I'm going to start at the top with uh, an edit poly here and uh, start doing an attach. Now again, you can do an attach list here, but I don't want to do that. I want to do it by hand, just to be on the safe side. Again, with an attach list, if you open that up and select everything and tell Max to collapse it down, nine times out of ten it will either crash Max or mess up your texture maps. Sniper X says, yeah, it's sad that it has to get to that before changes are made. It is sad, I agree. It's, it is, you know, you shouldn't have to threaten to take or take companies to court to get them to fix something that should not have been broken to begin with. I'm just going to match materials to material IDs here as I do this. And what that tells makes is not to change my material on me here. see in Max and the other reason I like their viewport here is when you start doing an attach here it's easy to tell because of that blue outline that it's actually been attached to your um, to your model you're not sort of guessing think, thinking is that been attached or not you can see it visually now I don't know if you noticed but the, the, the more pieces of geometry start attaching now, the longer it's taking Max to actually do it. And I'm going to go on the safe side here, but now that the saving doesn't seem to be taking quite as long, and this is what I recommend, this is how I generally work when I wasn't having that save problem of taking forever. I'm going to save out my file here, uh, save it as, I want to keep my original final version with everything unattached. I'm going to save it into my finals folder, but I'm going to call this one final and then I'm going to go underscore un uh, attached. So, I'm just going to start saving it gradually as I start attaching all these pieces together, just in case Max decides to crash. We don't have to start at the very beginning and attach from the top again, we can just continue on from where we left off. Because you never know with that. As good as it is, the it has a problem to, it has a tendency to crash paper. It freaks me out a bit too because when, when you save in Mac, on the top um, menu bar up there where it tells you what the file name is, it says not responding in, in brackets and every time I see that I think the program's crashed. It hasn't crashed obviously, that's just the way it's, it's telling you that uh, you can't do anything. But I, just, I wish they'd reword it where it doesn't say not responding because it makes it look like the program's crashed. Anyway, let's keep going here. Let's do the base there. Um, Sniper Echo asks, does Max have the option to do a mass export of objects? You mean a mass export of individual objects? Is that what you're asking? Because um, if that is what you mean, then no, not that I'm aware of. No, I don't, I don't think it does. I, I haven't come across an option in Max to do that. Um, no. I can see why where it could have its uses. Hey Montresieur, how are you? How's things? Uh, not, 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 not that I'm aware of Sniper Echo. I, I haven't come across an option in Max to to do that. Uh, it would be useful. I, it'd be, I know, like in Photoshop, you can set up. Um, an automated thing to, to do a conversion that way, but I haven't come across that in Max. 
Because when I take this model into uh, Unreal, that would be useful. Are you streaming today, Montresor, or have you streamed recently? I haven't seen you online. Maybe I just haven't been on when you've been on. Are you working on a new shader in uh, Unity? Cool. It's uh, a shader for that. Uh, what, what are you working on at the moment? Did you finish up that um, sci-fi floor panel thing? You can't stream too often? Okay. You work a lot. Yeah, I know, I know the feeling. Yeah, I know. I know and again, again, I know exactly what you mean by not being able to stream NDA stuff in the same. Um, which is why I work on stuff that is mine that I can not under NDA to show, uh, so I can show. But I, I know what you mean. That's why the other reason I only stream three days a week is I've got to do work for the studio as well, and uh, there's never enough time in the day, as you know. Did you uh, end up finishing that sci-fi piece? Is that what you're working on a shader for? In Unity? No, the sci-fi floor was practice. Okay. You practice sci-fi in your spare time because you do fantasy. Yeah, well, no, I'm doing fantasy stuff's great. I mean, I do... I do uh, a lot of stuff for a game studio. I, I'm contracted out to them, but um, my main studio work is Arch Fizz and that's... It's pretty ordinary and boring work. It's all modern. Lots of bathroom, lots of kitchen, lots of living room, <laughs> all that type of thing. Although I do, I do a lot of art heritage stuff, but that, that makes it a bit more interesting. But doing fantasy work is great. But I can see why you want to switch it up a bit if that's what you do uh, generally to do some sci-fi work. Yeah, I love fantasy stuff as well. Well, that makes sense. Uh, if you're working on fantasy stuff all the time, then that would be a strong point. So it is always good to practice on something that uh, is out of your comfort zone, as they say. You do a lot of contemporary interiors. Oh, as well? Okay. Oh, your day, day job is uh, VR art is an unre uh, in Unreal. Okay, yep. Yep. Yeah, I do. If you, Yeah, for sure, I want to see some of your art biz. You want to pop a link into chat? Actually, before you do that, Montresor, let me make sure that you're a regular in Nightbot, otherwise it'll um, ban you. So just be just a sec. I'll add you anyway because you are. You should be on my regulars list. Yep, I'm going to add you now. Should be good to go. Um, you should be good if you wanted to post the link, Montrose. Here yeah, I've uh, added you to the regulars, so no buck won't ban you or time you out. But yeah, no, I'd love to see some of your work. Like I say to you guys, uh, I always like to see what you're working on. One of the main reasons I'm on Twitch, I, I like interacting with everyone and seeing what, what, what stuff they're working on and what they're doing, or helping it in any way I can. Uh, VR uh, in uh, Unreal though, I know that's becoming a bigger thing. The studio I work for, we don't tend to do that. We uh, tend to render out using V-Ray. But... Yep, no problem. Just when you're ready. And tell me too if you don't want me to show it on, on stream. Um, I'm happy to look at it off stream. But if you don't mind me showing it on stream to everyone on Twitch, then uh, I'll do that. Just let me know. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and I've noticed that the Unreal Engine is being used a lot more in um, in VR, in ArchViz as well. But our, the studio I'm, I do work for, um, we don't tend to do that. We tend to, to render out a lot of stuff uh, in V-Ray. So. I love V-Ray, it's a great rendering engine. It doesn't have that real-time feedback that uh, Unreal does. So. Which is the other reason I want to bring this model uh, after we've done our beauty renders in Eon View into Unreal, because I like uh, being able to run over it run around it 
run up those stairs and inside that dome. It should be cool. Uh, and I think it's good for you guys to do your Unreal too to show you the workflow because taking this model into um, Eon View is a completely different workflow to taking it into Unreal. Oh, good, I can show it. And it says, uh, you need to learn uh, a ray trace render. You you need to learn one, okay. Trying to learn Arnold. Well, Arnold's very good. Let's have a look at the link that Montrose has put up. Um, yeah, no, Arnold's really good. I've noticed that most of the uh, Archbiz studios, uh, in this country at least, tend to work with, um, with V-Ray or Mental Ray, though. Generally V-Ray. V-Ray seems to be the uh, render of choice for most of them, at least here. But I have heard good things about Arnold. So this is some of Montresor's uh, Archbiz work. Very nice. This looks very nice. That's a really interesting encounter actually as well. Sorry, I'm it's just the um the chef in me coming back. I, I really like that counter. The shape of that counter. Okay, yes, again very nice. Did they really go with the same colour on the floor that they did on the um on the cupboard? Just an odd choice. The, the render is very nice though, very nice. Yes, very nice work again. What, um, what are you using here? What is this rendered in? Really this night bolt would stop being such a, um, bam. I've changed those settings six or seven times now. Uh, the floor's a bit, oh, it's a bit lighter there, okay. Oh, yeah, no, no, I understand, I understand, that's cool. I mean, they're, they're, they're beautiful renders, they, they look great. Oh, this is all real time and unreal. Well, uh, that's impressive, actually. Yeah, that is really impressive. I haven't done as much work in Unreal recently as I should. Um, I installed a new version the other day from Epic, but because I'm constant, I've got so much work on for um, for the studio that I'm doing. They don't use Unreal; they use V-Ray. I haven't been able to play with uh, Unreal as much as I'd like, which is another reason I want to bring the model I'm working on into Unreal. I want to uh, get back into using the program. Yeah, uh, a lot of studying time. Uh, a, a lot of time studying and real lighting. Yeah. But I'm impressed, actually. Unreal's uh, lighting has moved on quite a bit. That is really, really impressive. For Unreal, yeah. I'll have to um, have a word to the directors at the studio that I work at and say, listen, let's, let's start using Unreal a bit more. Because that is, that looks, that looks great. It's hard to change these uh, directors' minds sometimes, or even the um, the art director and stuff. But they get set in their ways after a while. They don't like change. But I'm impressed. The lighting looks good for real time. Really good. Design is nice too. I, I, li I like uh, the design of the um, interiors. It's particularly this kitchen though. Love this kitchen. Love that counter. And the color scheme as well. It's this uh, this dark wood with the black uh, marble. Oh. Very nice. And white. Always nice in the kitchen. Well, you're welcome. It is. Well, no, I appreciate you showing me. Uh, like I said, I love seeing the, the work that you guys have done and uh, or are doing. Uh, that's why I'm on Twitch. I like. Uh, Part of what I love about art and 3D and, and, hang, and the crowd of people that you get to work with in the studio 
is uh, looking at everyone's work. It's always fun. That's, that's the whole reason I love doing 3D and, uh, and art in general. Always good to look at other people's work. And you do some beautiful work. And like I said, I like interiors, it's great. Um, yeah, no, it does, it looks really good. So really nice work. I had no doubt that you'd do nice work though from when I was watching you working on that uh, sci-fi piece. So, you know, you, you know what you're doing, dude. You, you do nice work. So thank you for um, showing me and letting me show everyone on the screen. I appreciate that. And like I say to you guys, if, um, you, if you do have any work that you want me to look at, feel free to drop into chat. Just a word of warning though, if you are not a regular, you must tell me before you post a link, because uh, Nightbot will ban you otherwise, so at least time you out. So just, you've got to let me know ahead of time. Don't just pop in and post a link. But if you want to, I'm always happy to look at other people's work. So yes, thanks again for showing us once again. And like I said, I really must um, speak to the studio guys and convince them that maybe we should start doing a bit more in Unreal. But I do know the engine, I have used it before, and I, I create models for the game studio for it, so... Uh, they just get set in their ways and they only want to use uh, V-Ray. And V-Ray does beautiful renders, don't get me wrong. But I think um, being able to tell clients that they could look through their building in real time is a real... Um, benefit for the business though. Right, I'm just being careful here because I don't trust Max not to crash on me sometimes so um, we'll attach a few more pieces then we'll do another save before we continue on attaching the rest. Uh, and again as I was saying I always keep my original version as all separate and this is only being attached so we're going to because we can take it in, so we can take it into um, Eon View to do the beauty renders. I can feel it now, the love is sending down through the skies, your beautiful halo. Okay, turn off my attach, and again, I'm going to do a quick save here. And we're saving this as a separate version called Attached. And I'm saving it just gradually as we keep it adding more and more pieces uh, just in case Max decides it wants to crash. Um, yeah, so, but I, I, like I said though, I will take this model into Unreal after we've done our beauty renders and set up our environment in Eon View. Um, so I can go through with you guys the best way to take something like this into Unreal because the workflows are completely different to working with Vue. Vue being an um, environment renderer using a rendering engine and uh, Unreal being real time. There's a different workflow involved uh, for memory optimization of the model and uh, all that sort of thing when you take it into, into Unreal. Okay, let's keep going with our attack. And you'll notice, like I say, as I start attaching more pieces of geometry, Max gets slower and slower. Which is why I'm always wearing. I mean, it's not too bad, but it, it's starting to get a bit slower. Just it working out when it, it's doing its attach here. Okay. Uh, let's do these columns here, I think. Start doing these front borders. I've just got to be careful here because I don't want to attach the ivy. Um, I don't want to attach that column at the front. Uh, 
that one over there. And it's going to pull in a bit here on the model to attach this uh, other banister, uh, the other border piece, because I really, like I said, don't want to uh, attach the ivy here. I want to keep the ivy and the angel statues separate. They're the only pieces of geometry that won't all be one mesh. Do these uh, borders along the bottom? And I know that there's one on each side and one at the back. Uh, do a quick save here to make sure. So yes, again, like I said, the angel statues and the ivy will be kept separate. That's so that uh, people can remove the statues or move them if they want. Or even just uh, use the statues separately without the rest of the um, garden terrace. I know a lot of people that purchase my work like to do things like that. They like to just take the uh, statue work and um, put it in gardens and that type of thing. That's always good good to give people those sort of options. Okay. All right, let's start attaching some of these banisters, I think. Now, like I said, in Max, there is an option to collapse everything. Um, you don't have to do it like I'm doing it. I don't suggest you do that though, because Max will either crash or mess up your texture maps. Believe me, I've, I've tried it before and it always, without fail, generally will mess things up for me. So I learned my lesson and, and uh, I do it all individually now. You might think it'll save you time, but it won't. It'll just end up creating more work for you. But for those who are adventurous, jump into your Utilities tab, you'll see a, a, a button called Collapse. Use that if you, if you dare. Again, this collapse is important to um, because when I take it into view, I don't want to have uh, 80 different pieces of geometry I have to move around. I want it all as one object. You can um, actually do a collapse in view, but views collapsing is worse than Max's. So. It's always better to do it in Max. And uh, view takes about three times as long as well so, to do a collapse.
We're gradually getting there, we're saving our list, they're getting shorter and shorter. Makes to whether you've missed a piece because um, your thing will change, the, the pointer will change like that. And then at the end, you can always look in your list here to make sure. I hope my stream is still okay. OBS is warning me my encoding's overloaded. Things are right. Seems to be every time I do an attach it overloads my encoding, OBS starts complaining it's overloading my encoding. a few more until we get to the front here. Um, you see the workflow here that I'm using now. I'm just taking uh, the model and attaching all the pieces together. Um, I'm just going to continue doing that until everything is uh, attached up. But I'm just concerned because OBS is complaining that um, every time I do an attach I get a warning in OBS saying that I'm overloading my uh, GPU. But We'll keep going. <laughs> Again, let's um, let's save our file out here. Just be on the safe side. We've got nearly most of the pieces attached together. I may uh, leave it there though for today guys. Uh, I will be back on again on Monday next week at 5pm uh, where we'll finish uh, attaching the last few pieces of geometry for this model. Uh, it shouldn't take too much longer. Oh good, okay. Well, um, thanks for popping in and telling me Sniper Echo. I was worried because OBS kept saying uh, every time I do an attach of the piece of geometry that uh, my bitmate bitrate was being exceeded or my GPU was uh, being overloaded or something. I can't remember exactly what it said, but if, if the stream was still fine, then that's good to know. I'll tell later on because I record to my hard drive, so if anything funky goes on, I can always tell when I play it back. Um, so we might leave it there. When we come back on Monday, um, I'll finish doing the attach on the rest of the pieces of geometry here. We've probably attached half of them together, so we've only got uh, another half of them to go. We've reduced our list here quite considerably from where it was. Um, so we'll do that on Monday, and then we'll export the model and bring it into Eon View so that we can start setting up the materials with the normal map for, uh, for the model. So. My plan of attack when I come back on Monday will be to finish doing the attaches and uh, do an export so we can take it into view. Once it's in view, we will be setting up the materials for the model and uh, then we'll start um, creating a 3D environment for it and uh, doing some beauty renders. It will take us, uh, I'm not, depending on what type of environment we want to create, it, so it's going to take us a little while to get that set up position everything properly and all that type of thing but um, we'll, at this stage we're more worrying about just finishing the attaches and uh, importing it into Eon View so we can uh, start creating an environment. Uh, I want to thank you guys for watching and hanging out with me today. Yeah. Thank you guys in chat. 
Uh, you're quite welcome for the stream, Sniper Echo. Thank you for watching. Uh, you're, you're always in chat and uh, always watching, and I do appreciate it. So thank you. Thank you, all, all you guys that have uh, hung out with me and have been watching the stream. Uh, if, even if you haven't been in chat, you just uh, want to watch. And thank you for hanging out. Thank you for watching. Uh, I will be back on again on Monday at uh, 5 p.m. That's uh, Pacific time in the U.S. You're quite welcome, Montresieur. Yep, I'll catch you later. I'll, I'll keep an eye out for when you're streaming as well. Um, if you guys want to check out Montresieur's work, he's uh, another Twitch streamer who does 3D. Um, I will be back on Monday. If you're not sure when I'm going to be live, though, just want a, a reminder, keep an eye on my uh, Twitter page at Phil Does 3D. I always post 15 minutes before I'm about to go live there. I will be back. <coughs> I will be back on again on Monday at 5 p.m. Though, guys, uh, thank you again for hanging out with me. Thank you for watching, and uh, I will see you guys next week. Have a good weekend, too, guys.